What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we have the long-awaited releases from Glorious with the Model O- and Model D- wireless gaming mice. This comes as no surprise as Glorious has seemingly been pumping out the budget gaming peripherals over the last few years, so we'll run through them both and show them off for you guys, talk about the changes and improvements in the brand new Model O- and D- wireless gaming mice. First, obviously one of the big selling points to these is going to be the fact that they're lightweight. Each a few grams under 70 grams is still definitely on the lighter side, and given the minus models, that means the shell and body are now smaller than the original O and D releases. And the fact they're releasing these both at the same time is cool to see instead of spreading them out each individually, because now, you know, depending on your hand size or your preferred grip, Glorious gives you the option to pick from the entire lineup of lightweight mice, either small or large, ambidextrous or ergonomic and now wireless. Each mouse is available in a black or a white color in the matte finish. I believe they're formally ditching the glossy version from years past, haven't seen that one available in a while. But yes, these two the latest installments in the lightweight wireless mouse market. Now the O- is advertised as 65 grams, but comes in a little lighter at 64 grams on my scale. Same story with the D- advertised at 67 grams, coming in at 66 grams for me. But obviously this is just my particular like kitchen scale, and all these mice have like a one or two gram variance as it is. Visually compared to their bigger brother, they do look pretty much the same, with the only real visual difference being on the O- to the Model O, we no longer have the cutouts on the left and right clicks, which is something that even the Model D ditched, so overall it's a cleaner look without those cutouts up top. But I mean just side by side, you'd be pretty hard pressed to tell they're actually different because they don't physically look that much smaller, but honestly it's a world's difference when you're actually holding and using them compared to the non versions. For me personally, since we just had the Model D wireless come out like last month, I was more used to this D- now since it just felt more familiar to me. And this one I'd say is more on the medium to small side, comparatively, because the O- is just petite. It's much more small than medium, I'd say. And now using them both with no cable, completely wireless, does feel like an extension of your hand almost at this weight and size. We still have the Odin logo on the left side, Glorious printed on the right, three zone RGB lighting still. So really just the big difference for those who may not be you know, used to the mouse market is the Ergonomic D- has that extended hump on the right side with a more dramatic groove on the left for your thumb, which is why it's called Ergonomic. It's you know naturally made to fit the inside of your hand, while the Ambi Model O- is more symmetrical on both sides. Before we move on inside the box, you get your charging cable, wireless dongle and USB adapter, plus an additional set of skates for each mouse if you want to extend the footprint surface area underneath. Now the one knock of Glorious over the years has been sort of an inconsistency when it comes to quality control. I personally have not had an issue and same stays true here. No issues at all, very sturdy, you know, just really trying to squeeze it hard, no squeaking at all. In terms of like left and right clicks are nice and firm, no wiggle room at all, no noticeable pre-travel or post-travel on left and right clicks, same goes for the side buttons. They sound and feel really snappy. Listen up. And like we saw in last month's D wireless, the uh, scroll wheel is still just super smooth, but you still get those individual steps. And it's just because it actually did some um, like internal lubing to the scroll wheel. So it's the same wheel, just now lightly lubed and it feels great. Inside the mouse, it's still using their BAMP sensor up to 16,000 DPI. It's the same wireless tech that they used for the D and O wireless. But switches now are binned 80 million kale switches, which is why they just felt more snappy and tactile to me versus years past. Like it was immediately noticeable how much more just satisfying they felt. So the new switches, definitely a welcome change. And for my time testing with gameplay and stuff, I played at 750 DPI, which is kind of like my go-to with these smaller mice. I always have a variance between like six to 800. So for me, 750 felt dialed in. 1000 hertz pulling rate and a zero millisecond debounce time, which is something I saw recommended on a bunch of forums that our YouTubers talk about. And just overall, they both felt great. Now, I've always said in years past, I am more of an ergonomic user, so I like that shape better, even though I really, you know, mained the Viper Ultimate for pretty much over two years. So while I prefer ergonomic, I did sort of gravitate more towards symmetrical mice. And the big thing here was 
at this smaller side, I would say the actual D minus doesn't feel as drastically different as the O minus does. Um, it's, but for me, the D minus was my go-to. I felt really, really comfortable with this. And it's really the mouse that I use where I performed best in with gameplay. However, if you are looking for the lighter version, which is the O minus wireless, and one that's gonna actually feel noticeably smaller, like I said, O minus is the way to go because it's still smaller than the D minus, lighter, which again, with the trend of this whole lightweight mouse market going, that's what I think most people are gonna gravitate towards is the O minus wireless. Now it's funny because when the wired O minus came out, I really didn't like it that much. It felt too small for me. But even back then, the more lightweight trend was still going and progressing, but smaller mice weren't really, you know, that big of a thing yet. So over the past two years, as the lighter, smaller trend started to evolve, um, I did get more used to this now. So I've tested a bunch of smaller mice over the past year or so. So for me, I could say I like it better now than I did with the wired version. But again, the biggest factor with finding the mice that's gonna be best for you is you, your preference, your preferred grip, and your hand size. Which is why I said it's really cool that Glorious now gives you that full lineup to pick between large, small, wired, wireless, ambi, ergo. During my time testing, battery life has been great. It's rated for over 70 hours. And when I fully drained it the first time, I had it charging for just around a half hour and it got right to 50%. So that's a pretty good bump for that time frame. You know, half hour charge, you're still getting around 35 hours of use then. Now, obviously the RGB effect and LED brightness is also going to impact your battery life. So I always recommend keeping it below 50%, get the most out of your wireless mouse. There's never a need for 100% brightness. And then into the core software, which they use here, you have the lighting tab, obviously for configuring the lighting on those three zones with the two strips on each side, plus the scroll wheel being illuminated. Also change the brightness and stuff as well. Then you have the key bindings tab for reprogramming the six buttons on here. They are fully programmable, so left and right clicks can still be whatever you want. And on the right side of the core software has all your functions, macros, and bindings. You can remap these two. It's all there. And then the performance tab. That's like I said before, you can change your DPI, change what each step is in increments of 50, change up the lighting color for each DPI step, which will correspond to the LED underneath the mouse, change your pulling rate, debounce time, lift off distance, all here. But at the end of the day, each minus wireless option comes in at $79.99. So for 80 bucks, that is still very competitive given the current mouse market. And as I said before, the ergo shape really isn't too, too popular. Um, and there's really not a lot of small wireless versions like this out here with this shape. So I think it's a really great price for both. In terms of cons, like I said before, quality control was on point, no issues whatsoever. I do have very two minor things I wanna bring up. One is kind of stupid on my end, but on the O minus wireless, the right side of the light strip is peeking out a little bit more than on the left side. It's an extremely minor annoyance, but like once I noticed it, I couldn't stop staring at it. It doesn't affect the mouse at all. And secondly, I will admit, I wish the minus wireless options were just a little bit lighter because compared to the, you know, wired versions of these, yes, they're lighter, but they're not drastically lighter. I believe this one's like four grams lighter. This one's two grams lighter. So I would have loved to have seen maybe like a five to seven gram range here of them being, you know, lighter in the wired version. But again, 80 bucks for these, very impressive. So if you are in the market to pick up a new gaming mouse, or maybe you're trying to just upgrade over a wired mouse you have, and you're ready to make that wireless plunge and get into the wireless, lightweight, small market, then here you go. Really good pricing at 80 bucks. And guys, that'll wrap it up for my review of the glorious Model D and Model O minus wireless mice. Hope you enjoyed. If you wanna check them out, I'll have them listed for you in the description down below. If you liked this video, give it a big thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.